Today's episode is sponsored by PetFlow. Dogs require lots of time and attention, and I know that a lot of you have busy lifestyles. And one way to get some of that time back is to have your pet's food automatically shipped to your front door with PetFlow. PetFlow has made it super easy for you to give it a shot. Just enter code ZAC30 when you check out and you'll get $10 off your first three automatic shipments. All you have to do is choose your dog's food and tell PetFlow how often you want it delivered. I'll have a link and coupon code in the description below. If you're not already, follow us on Instagram. We have lots of cool extra content over there and pick up a copy of my book if you're new to training dogs. Bitsy Bella, the tiny three month old dog is coming over and we're just gonna get to know her together and see how she is. You weigh as much as air. What's that Bitsy Bella? Hey, oh, look at this. So Bitsy, three months old, right into the toy. Oftentimes when a dog has this much energy, it means they're capable of doing so much. I mean, look at all that curiosity. Look at that focus. You just have to kind of harness it and turn it into something beautiful. All right, let's see how her fetch looks. And I'm just, you notice right there, I just threw it just a few inches. Cause I don't want to throw it across the room and then have her get distracted. That's pretty good focus right there. Come on, come on. Wait, you forgot your ball. Your ball, it's over here. Good. Come on. Yes! Oh, look at that little fetch. Three months old, that's wonderful. Come on. But see, it's much more important with fetch at this age to get these tiny short reps in right here, not throw it across the room or the yard, because you really want them to get the mechanics of fetch down. Chasing the ball, picking it up, bringing it back in the straight line, promptly letting go, and eagerly awaiting the next throw. That is the, the workflow we're trying to accomplish with fetch. Come on. Yes, good. Right there. I love that she just turned around and that was good enough for me. With her temperament, my guess is she's probably the type of dog who's going to really get into fetch where this little stu kind of stuff isn't gonna distract her if you're consistent about her for about 12 weeks or so. This is a period you have to go through where they're like, I'm energetic, I don't wanna listen. I wanna do this, I wanna do that. That's just part of having a puppy. Just teach her a good game of fetch. And with dogs this small, I mean, you can get them fetching inside the house pretty easy and they can actually get a workout inside the house. It's a year of training before you should even think about trying to phase out treats. And it doesn't just happen naturally. You have to really purposely phase out treats and be like, look, you listen to me here in this context, in that context. You know, when, when people are coming over for dinner, when we're out on a walk and when there's a squirrel there, she doesn't even know your language yet. Treats are what keep it going, keep the communication going. Get it. Believe it or not, at three months old, Bitsy is not yet potty trained. The biggest mistake people make with dogs is not keeping them on leash uh, with, with new dogs or puppies in particular like almost all the time. You know, the thing with potty training though is that you really have to just show her the right place to go often for many, many months. She's a fun dog. With dogs this young too, it's important to give them exposure to lots of different dogs of all sizes. But remember, when you're socializing your dog, you wanna go out of your way to screen dogs to make sure they're likely to behave very tolerantly of, of your dog. So, you know, in Bitsy's case, you wouldn't just wanna let her go up to any dog in the world because she's so little and fragile. Let's see how she does on her basics. Let's see if she knows how to sit yet. And see right here, I'm trying to get her to sit, but do you see how she's like all over the place? That's really normal for dogs. So you have to be real, this is what I mean when I say you gotta be patient with dogs. You can see, I mean, look how fast she's going. So as soon as you get her into a sit, you wanna go reward her. Look how she's just hopping up and everything. This is really common with dogs of all sizes. They don't really know to wait to get rewarded. So that's something we kind of have to teach them. So, whoops. Another reason a leash is important. Good. So right there, I noticed that you'll sit when you just hold up the treat. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. Yes. Good. I'm trying to get her to hold that sit a little bit longer, but you see how I'm, quick, uh, see how I'm quickly coming back? If your dog has a temperament like this and they're real excited and they're jumping around all over the place, don't be frustrated by that. That's a really good sign that you've got a highly, highly teachable dog. All of this is just curiosity. This is a dog just trying to interact with their world and just, just trying to see what it's all about. And when you have a dog that has that kind of curiosity, they're really easy to teach if you put the time in. If you don't put the time in with them, then they can be a lot to manage. It's important to give them a lot of different things to do. Oh, look at that. Look at those eyes. I'm just letting her nibble on it right now. Good, let me see if we can, can we do it down. And see, this is what I mean with little dogs. I, I've made this point in the past, but when you kind of push back with your lure, you're likely to let them, encourage them to go into a down. See, traditionally when you lure a dog into a down, although it might work with her, 
we kind of come at this angle, you know, straight down. But with, you can see by pushing back a little, it seems like little dogs are more likely to go into that down. Give me a sit. Look at me, good, got a sit and a look at me. I'll take that, that's good. Come on over here. What I've learned about Bitsy is that she's willing to work for both food and play. So she has two really effective currencies. And now we have the tools to move forward and teach her things. So it's, training just comes down to providing positive outcomes to desired behavior. So when she's behaving well, if there's a really good treat there at the end to let her know, hey, that yielded something good for you, or a few seconds of tug of war or even a toss of the toy, then she's more likely to repeat those behaviors. And we just have to be there as people and really let them know, hey, I like that. I'm gonna make sure I acknowledge that I like that by paying you and letting you know that I appreciate it. And then over time, as these things become second nature to your dog, you don't have to pay him so much. She's really wiggly. She's just wiggly in general. And so wouldn't it be nice to be able to hold her and just have her relax? Well, a lot of this comes down to a course exercise, making sure they're getting an outlet for all this energy. But also, you know, you want to encourage them to be calm by maybe letting them nibble on a good treat here and desensitizing them as I cover often with puppies by massaging their little feet and massaging their ears and just getting them used to kind of being touched and held. But really letting her just nibble on something like that, I mean, she's barely getting any. She's pretty much only able to lick it right there. I'm not really restraining her at all. She's sitting here voluntarily. We're just petting her softly, encouraging calmness. You'll get the most bang for your buck out of this type of training post-exercise. So right after she's worn out a little bit. I would really place a strong emphasis on working with her on the basics. You're familiar with my playlist on YouTube? Okay, cool. Get everything looking really good inside, then throw it all out the window and start training outside and know, I gotta reteach all this stuff outside now. It's really important to be real sensitive to the context in which you're asking a dog to do something. And, and that's something that's not really intuitive to us as people. Tell yourself, look, it's a year of this. It's six months of really hardcore focusing and managing her and taking 20 minutes to an hour a day spread throughout the day to really focus on primary training and keep her on leash otherwise or in environments where she can't get away with bad behavior like not coming to you. So you don't make progress all at one time. Just keep chipping away and, and working on some of the basic things like sit, stay, leash walking, teaching them the right things to bite on and, and chew on and stuff like that. Click thumbs up for Bitsy Bella. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel. Are you following us on Facebook and Instagram yet? We produce lots of extra content over there. Also, pick up a copy of my book, Dog Training Revolution. It'll show you everything you need to know to train your dog.